Hello and uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm actually going to be doing a different video than I normally have been doing. I've been doing a lot of eighty eighty work, but today I want to talk about AVR, specifically these AVR chips. These AVR chips are called the AT Tiny eighty fives. They're the AT Tiny version of the Arduino Unos that you have used, or many of you have used before. They have the same exact instruction set. They have the same pipeline. In fact, they actually go the same speed. Uh, today, we're going to be clocking these to 16.5 megahertz. Um, you'll see many run at 1 or 8, but that's all bootloader stuff. They only have 8 pins, so you may be wondering about you know GPIO and expandability. Well, you have 6 GPIO pins. One is a reset, which can be remapped to a weak uh, I.O. pin. But you have five other strong I.O. pins that can sync or source current. Um, there is an ADC on this chip. There is a watchdog timer. And also there's a block on here called USI, Universal Serial Interface, which can be configured to do I2C or SPI, or kind of any sort of protocol that you know, requires two wires. Or three wires. There is three wire and there is two wire protocol on this chip. So with that out of the way, let's get these uh, AVR chips out of this bag and onto a breadboard. And I'll show you how to program this over USB. So before we move on, I have to give uh, one small caveat here. I did say that we're going to program these chips with just USB. Um, however, there is one step you're going to have to do first unless you already have a pre-programmed micronucleus style bootloader, which we'll get into later. And if you don't, don't worry. If you have an Arduino, you have all the parts you need to make this happen. We're going to need to build something called an ISP, or an in-system programmer. Now, if this looks a little terrifying to you, don't worry. This is actually a very, uh, very, very simple circuit. I have an Arduino Nano right here. This is the AT-Tiny. Uh, don't worry about these chips. This is for another computer project I haven't really gotten around to. And this is just an you know, output LED. You don't need to worry about that. But all of these wires right here, these are just the wires for the ISP programmer. You just need a few data wires, uh, power and ground, and then all you need is a uh, small capacitor to uh, reset, uh, the ground and reset, and that's it. I will link to the schematic down below if you have a breadboard, an Arduino, um, and some breadboard wire, you have everything you need to make this happen. Now that we have the ISP built, let's go back to the computer and I will show you how to program this Arduino with the Arduino as ISP firmware. It's very easy to do. It's already an example, already in the Arduino IDE. Okay, so we're ready. Uh, first, what we're gonna do is we're going to go here. We're going to do Arduino. We're gonna open up Arduino, the Arduino IDE, and what I'm going to do is just do a new sketch. And as you can see, I already have my ISP plugged in. Now, it's blinking. Don't worry about that. That's just an, uh, that's just an assembly sketch running on the uh, AT-Tiny. Don't worry about that. But I have the circuit built with the AT-Tiny installed. But there is one crucial feature. I do not have the capacitor between reset and ground. Because if you do that, you lock the controller into a certain state, which will be impossible to upload a programmer to it, uh, a program to it. So you have to um, take that out first. This is like the third take I've taken. So then, make sure you have the correct board selected, okay, and the correct port. And then for those with Arduino Nanos, and especially clones of Arduino Nanos, make sure you have the correct bootloader selected uh, or the processor. Um, many times we'll get a clone from some Chinese site and you won't be able to upload code to it. You're going to pull your hair out and not understand why. It's because you don't have the right bootloader um, selected. Now you can burn a, a new boot bootloader, but that's a little bit outside the scope of this video. We're going to be doing the bootloader for the AT Tiny 85. So we're going to go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP, Arduino in-system programmer, okay? And we're going to do nothing, we're gonna change nothing, but we are going to upload. Just upload it to your Nano, to your Uno, to your whatever you're gonna use. And I have verbose 
turned on, so don't worry about the, uh, the red text. But as you can see, it has worked. So now, let us work on flashing the bootloader for the ATtiny85. Okay, so now let us uh, prep some more. So what we're going to do is we're going to file, we're going to go to preferences, and we're going to go to the additional boards manager URLs. And I have a couple in here, and that's because I was toying around with different kinds of ATtiny um, software. But I'm going to copy this in the description. You're going to be using the Digistump um, index JSON file. And now this is a, um, this is sort of a back copy because the Digistump, Digistump site seems to have been down for some time, but luckily the boards have been saved and copied over to GitHub. So I'll be sharing this link with you. And also, you can use the Arduino IDE to burn the bootloader of your ATtiny85. Um, what you do is you then choose something from the list for the ATtiny85. You would then go to Tools, Programmer, you do Arduino's ISP. You would then click burn bootloader and then you would burn bootloader for that but instead as a fail safe uh, i will link you guys these files and this is the micronucleus style bootloader for the avr at tiny 85. so micronucleus is a vusb or a virtual usb bootloader and what it does is it clocks up the board just a teeny bit so then you can use the USB pins of your PC to directly interface with the chip to program it. So basically you're using your USB port as an emulated ISP. Note that this does not allow you to use USB from the device. That is something completely different and good luck is all I can say. So what's gonna happen is you're going to take this file, edit it, and replace this file path avrdo.exe with your own file path and it'll be very similar to what i have right here then you need to add the file path of your configure file which again is very similar to the one up here and you're going to keep these flags the same you're going to keep this the same and you are going to change this port number pcom7 to whatever port that your Arduino happens to be on. Then you can right click and run it. Uh, let me do that. Run as administrator. Writing, reading, and it has been written. And as you can see, completely wiped my chip because I don't have any blinking light anymore, but that's okay. Okay, so for this build, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the ISP, I'm going to pull out the ATtiny that was programmed. So we're gonna take this, and stick it on here. Okay. Next, we're going to take a USB to breadboard adapter. This one is USB-C. I got this for like cents on Amazon. We're gonna stick it in. Okay. Now, between, actually, you know what? Let's move this just a little closer just to make it look better. Okay, so between the USB connector in the ATtiny85, I need to put 47 ohm resistors. So I'm going to take a 47 ohm resistor, bend it. Okay, there's one. I'm gonna take another one. And there's two. So now we're going to put these resistors between the D minus and D plus and pins PB3 and PB4, which happen to be pins two and three. Sorry, yeah, no, pins two and three, because it goes pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna put it between two and 
d minus okay and then we're going to put one between d plus and three like that Next, we need to take some Zener diodes rated of 3.6 volts, and we need to put them between ground Next, we need to take some Zener diodes, these things, and we need to put them between ground and the D minus and D plus. We'll just do minus D plus. Okay. Now, let's tie those to ground. We're going to take ground right here. And we're going to put it right down the ground. And also, we're going to put ground on this chip. there. Now we need a pull-up resistor between power and pin 2. So we need a pull-up resistor. It says it's rated for, let's do a 1k ohm resistor. So pin 2 and power It's much easier when I'm not trying to film at the same time. Okay. And then we need power. So we're going to take power and put it into the USB. There. Now that circuit should be done. So that's simple, folks. Now let's go take it over to the computer and see if it works. Okay, so once you have your uh, setup built, make sure that your components are jammed really tight into that breadboard. This this breadboard is kind of old and a lot of the, uh, the, the holes are very loose. So I had to sort of jam those things in there. Um, I also did forget to uh, ground out the... Um, the diodes, so be sure to ground out the diodes. I don't know why I forgot that in the uh, in, in the video. Please, please forgive me. Right now, I have this cable loose. It is just hanging here, and that's because we're going to program it in a different way than you normally would, and I'll show you how. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to select other board for the board's drop down, and we're going to type in DigiSpark. Okay, and now we're going to want to use the DigiSpark default 16.5 megahertz. Now, there are other um, styles of this. I haven't done a deep dive into, into them. I know that Micronucleus DigiSpark is sort of like what we want to anyway, but we're, we're not doing that right now. We're going to be using the DigiSpark default 16.5 megahertz bootloader option because that's what we have flash. 
Guess we're gonna hit, yep, yeah, yeah, we're gonna hit okay. And right now I just have a uh, blank sketch and we're just gonna see if it works. So we're going to hit upload. Um, and as you can see, it says plug-in device now. Um, you have 60 seconds. So I plugged it in. The computer realized something got plugged in. And as you can see, it has programmed. Um, the bootloader, what ends up happening is when you first start up, it has to detect um, something on the, the those pins. And if those pins are doing something, you know, that the driver tells them to do, and the bootloader acknowledges it, that means you will be reprogramming it. So there you go. That's how you program these these chips. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to, you know, I'll show you that this works. So if I go here, examples, basics, blink. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing LED built in to zero because what's going to end up happening is I'm going to take an LED from pin zero and I'm going to put it um, Let's put an LED on this board and let's make it do something cool. Okay. We got red LED here. Positive. Pin zero. Resistor. Okay. Now let's upload. Replug. It has programmed. And as you can see, it is now flashing. That's how you can set up an ATtiny85, or any ATtiny really, if you know how to write bootloaders, uh, to be programmed over USB directly with nothing in between, except for a couple, uh, you know, circuit protection measures. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can probably just run lines directly into this chip and everything will be fine, but it is recommended to have the diodes and the resistors just for circuit protection. In fact, there is a shot key diode that I did not add onto this board because I cannot get it to work no matter how much I try. There's supposed to be a shot key diode between power and the chip and the pull-up resistor. But as you can see, it works perfectly fine. And many, you know, most modern computers have that circuitry built into their stuff anyway. So, you know, why bother? It, it's cheap, it's easy. You can do it on a breadboard. Um, this is part of a much bigger project I'm working on. And uh, perhaps you will see that later on, hopefully before the end of this month. And yeah, that's it. That's how to set up an ATtiny 85 to be programmed uh, directly over USB. Uh, you can extend this to um, Microchip Studio or whatever it is now. Uh, I forget what, what they call it now. What, what is this thing? Yeah, this is Microchip Studio. Uh, if you go to tools, you go to external tools, you can copy the same exact um, commands that you have for the for, for this. You can copy the same exact things and the flags and all that directly over here. So you can program directly from the microchip studio. You can just go here and click, you know, VUSB and stuff like that. And it will be uploaded. You have to do the same thing. You have to unplug and replug. But... I mean, that's so easy to do. And that's it. It, it, it is that easy to program an AT1085 via USB. I'll see you in the next one.